What's up everybody, I'm Brian Lovett, AKA B-Love. Today I'm gonna to step you through what you need to know to get started 3D printing coronavirus masks. I've had feedback from a number of people asking, what the heck is a 3MF file? How do I get started with it in Prusa Slicer? How do I take that file, make an STL, G-code, whatever it might be, and how do I get that onto my printer so I can actually print these things? A lot of you have brand new Creality Ender 3s, which are fantastic printers. So what I'm gonna do today is take you through the steps to get those files into Prusa Slicer, get them manipulated for your specific printer, resize them, get them set up for your build plate, and get you in action as quickly as possible. Let's get started. All right, so jumping right into it, we're gonna fire up Prusa Slicer, and I'm going to go ahead and import my 3MF file. And so what you do is you come in here and you go to open project, and then you're gonna select the file that you want, and I'm gonna pick the, for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna pick the, the Fast Mark III. This is the one I just recently did. And now this is the main print bed. What this does is this shows you the printable surface area of your print bed. And this is going to differ based on the printer that you've selected. You can see that over here on my printer, I have Prusa Mark III S selected. Now, if a lot of you have a Creality printer or something like that, you can go up here to the configuration wizard and this should kick off the first time you open Prusa Slicer, but you can select other vendors, there's Creality, and you can see the Ender 3 is on here with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle, which is the default nozzle for an Ender 3. And you just step through the configuration process and you can add that printer there and then it'll show up in your printer dropdown. You'll be able to just simply select it. You can see I have Creality Ender 3 now under system preferences. So if I select that, it's going to change the print volume and I think this is the problem some of you have been running into is that you're taking my Prusa Slicer settings, you're uploading it into uh, your system, and you're finding that your print volume is smaller than mine, and so you can't print these. But it's easy. Don't worry about it. So let's go ahead and show you how to take care of that. So still, in this bottom left-hand corner, we're going to select the 3D Editor view. And then you can come in here, and if you click off of the objects, you can actually select these one at a time. So what we can do is say, okay, I'm gonna select this part of the mask, I'm gonna delete it. I'm gonna select this one and delete it. A lot of you have asked me for separate STL files that have just the original mask, but it's really not necessary because you can go in here and you can add or delete as many as you want. So now we have two, and it looks like we'll be able to get those to print on or fit on the print bed. But again, if you select one, you can also clone it. So you can come up here and you can go to the plus and add an instance. And then you can come over here and manipulate it by rotating it or whatever you need to do to try and get it to fit. But in our case, we're gonna stick with deleting it and just printing off two masks. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna drag these pieces out a little bit so that they fit a little bit better. And you can kind of look around and make sure no edges are touching and there's no collisions. And it looks like this is a really good print for an Ender 3. So what you would do from here is you simply go to Slice Now. It's going to take a moment. And what it's doing is it's calculating all the tool path movements. And you can see it's already done. And you can also see the layer change. And this slider on the side here, you can actually see as the layers change and the layers move down, you can see every single individual layer that's going to be printed and how it's going to look. Now there's also some kind of advanced stuff you can look at from this screen. You can look at, you can see under here in the view, you can see the volumetric flow rate, the fan speeds, the speed of the print, whatever you want to do. So you can look at the, the speed of the print. And if you look here, it's in millimeters per second. So you can see from 20 all the way up to 50 and you can see how fast the print head's moving depending on the area. You can see like infill moves closer to 50, and then some of these other outer perimeters are closer to the 20 or 30 range. And you can tweak those settings, but I'm not gonna get into that right now. And you can see that the, the estimated print time by default is really long, it's 19 hours, but a lot of that is because of the, the other default settings. So let's get into those now. So we've selected the Creality Ender 3, that's great. Generic ABS, this is not what we're going to be printing with. You wanna go with uh, probably 
generic pet G or pre cement pet G, depending on what you've got. And then detail. You definitely, definitely don't want to print it at 0.12 millimeter detail. That is far too fine for this job. So we'll go to the, the 0.24. There's an option for that. And we'll slice again. And you saw it was 19 hours. We'll see what that drops it down to. And you're down to 10 hours, 34 minutes. Better, still not great. So next, we're going to go up here and go into print settings. And this is where you're going to adjust a whole bunch of things. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the vertical shell perimeters. This is the outer perimeters, the number of, essentially the number of layers that it prints um, horizontally, I guess you would say, for the print. So we're going to put that to three. And then the layer height, 0.24 is actually, that's uh, how tall the layers are, the individual layers. The smaller the layers are, the finer the detail. We don't really care too much about detail with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to select 0.32. Why am I doing 0.32 and not 0.30? Well, you see, the maximum size that you can print a layer is 80% of the nozzle diameter. And by default, you're going to have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So if you take 80% of 0.4, it's 0.32. If you have a 0.6 nozzle or a 0.8 nozzle, obviously you can go higher on your layer heights and you can cut down those print times but just changing that one setting let's go ahead and again take a look at the slicer and see what that does and that'll get us down from that 10 hours down to 8 hours 27 minutes much more reasonable but we can do better so i like to do detect bridging perimeters bridging perimeters are sections where it basically, there's no infill and it has to pull a piece of filament across kind of open space. And so there's a few spots on the nose of the, um, the print that have bridging perimeters. And so we're going to want to keep that on. Uh, detect thin walls and I usually do extra perimeters if needed. That's all good. And I'm going to save this and, and export the file for you guys too. Infill, actually with those extra perimeters and the thick layers, we can go 0% on the infill. That's going to save us some time for sure. And then speed. Now you can come in here and you can start to tweak some of the speed settings. So for perimeters, for example, we could go to, uh, you know, maybe like 60 millimeters a second, but we'll, we'll mess with that later. Um, advanced. One of the big things you can do is change the extrusion width. And so we talked about how 0.32 is the height that we can print, but you can also print various widths. And both, so by printing a wider width, you get better layer adhesion, which we really want with these masks. Uh, it also cuts down on print times too. So what we're going to do is we're going to change these all to 0.6. And we're going to go down the list and do all of them. And I've also done this on my, my Prusa settings as well. And then the other one I like to change for pet G filament specifically is the bridge flow rate. And we'll see how this works on the ender, but uh, the default is 0.95. And what this is, is when you're printing those bridges, and again, those bridges are those, those areas where there's no support underneath it, and it's just kind of printing in thin air almost. Um, it's the amount of pressure down on the nozzle and the amount that's being pushed out of the nozzle. So if you put the flow rate a little bit lower, what ends up happening is as it's stretching the filament across that bridge, it's actually creating tension, keeping it tight, and you end up getting better uh, bridge adhesion and uh, cleaner looking bridges. So we're gonna go down to, we'll go down to 0.8 instead of 0.95. That's usually a good starting point. Let's go back to our platter, slice again, and see if that did anything for us. And we were at uh, 8.27 before. We're already down to 6 hours, 23 minutes. Just minor, minor tweaks. The next thing we can do is you can go over to filament settings. And this is all good. Um, the one thing you might want to do, I talked about this in another one of my tutorials, but you can print something called a temperature tower. And that sort of shows you what the ideal temperature is to print uh, whatever your filament is. I have found that at least for the Ziltec and my Amazon Basics 
pet G. They're actually 220. We're going to go 220. 220 to 225 is typically the best um, print temperature. And then the print bed uh, for adhesion, I like to keep it a little bit higher. So we're going to go 90% on that. Now for cooling, we're going to go keep fans always on. We're going to leave all that default. Um, the min max, uh, fan speed, we're going to leave at 20. Max is 60. That's fine. Bridges, it's going to crank it up. And again, bridges are those overhanging areas. Enable fan if print time is below. Um, you, can, you can modify this so that it'll crank up the fan if the print time for a specific layer is below an approximate number of seconds. So basically, if it's going to take longer than a specified amount of time, it'll turn on the fan just so you get kind of better cooling. Um, we'll go ahead and leave this alone for now, but these are settings that you can tweak to get a little bit more performance out. Um, advanced, I think we're going to leave alone for now. Uh, filament overrides, I think we're good. And see where we're at. It shouldn't have changed much, if any. Cool. Six hours, 23. And so what's going to happen is we've sliced the file. Now you can come up here and you can save the project. This is going to save the 3MF file. So I'm going to go fast mark 3 mass 3 one piece because they're just uh, one piece instead of the original two piece design. And I'm going to say Ender 3. And actually, I do need to say this is two masks instead of three masks. We'll save it. That saves the 3MF file. You can also export the export as an XT STL if you wanted to. And then when you're done, you can export the G code. And the G code is what the printer actually runs on. So the G code is the code that actually gives all of the different tool movements and paths that the print head is going to use to actually print this object. And so we're going to keep the name the same and we're going to save that G code. And then when you go to your printer, that's what you're actually going to load on your printer to print. Now, the one other thing I want to show you is how to scale these objects. Um, of course, you know, one of the things that we've seen is that there's kind of two sizes that seem to fit people well. It's the 100% size is kind of the correct size for adult males. And then smaller males or um, females, and for example, women, it uh, seems like 90% is a better size. So we've got these at 100%. And if you come over here, you can go to the scale factors. And it's actually, it's funny because the ender actually has it at 10. So we'd probably just go down to nine and you can see that it scales both objects simultaneously. So if we go to 10, nine, there you go. And of course you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing for this. And this is at 99 and a half, which I know is kind of weird. So we're just gonna go down 10%. We're gonna go to 89 and a half. And that should be the correct scaling for these objects to do both the 90% and the 100%. And again, if you want to just do a test print, delete one of these. You can just delete one, delete one, and then drag it around wherever you want it. And you've got one to print instead of two. It's very simple. And then, of course, clone it by just selecting it and duplicating it and drag it so it stays on the print bed. And that's really, honestly, as easy as this is. And that's for the people with the Ender 3. If you've got a Prusa, my files are pretty much set to go. You just click it and you're good to go. That's it. We kind of got into the weeds on a couple things, went into some deep dives on some settings. But the reality is we got it down from 19 hours to 6 hours for the print time. We showed you how to kind of manipulate everything. And I think that's going to go a long way to getting you using these prints and printing them as quickly as possible to get these face masks into the hands of doctors and nurses that need them very much, very quickly. As always, head on over to my Slack channel. I'm gonna drop a link in the description. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything I can help you out with, drop it down in the comments below and I'm always happy to help out. Until next time, thanks guys.